Uh, so instead of singing the doxology this morning, we're going to start right off with um, number 328 in the hymnal. Do you have a hymnal there? I want to make sure those who have one there. Oh, so this is, yeah, my husband says this is Pastor Corey's favorite. For those of you who don't know Corey, he, Corey had come to our church and, and now he is out as a pastor himself, um, pastoring a church. So this song, God Will Take Care of You, is his favorite. So if you'd like to stand, we'll sing that together first. except uh, I will mention Debbie and Karen, um, and I ask that you uh, let their caregivers hear you when you're guiding them, and give them a full and fast recovery from what they've got to go through, if indeed one there is. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We're going to get right to the further adventures of Crazy Paul. <laughs> Book of Acts. And it's going to be fun. I, uh, our message last week from this particular portion of the Book of Acts 
was entitled do you think anything of that you think any part of this is easy and it's not we have a life is pain except for the parts that aren't it's a I don't know what was that princess bride I agree I had a I had a doctor appointment and we and I got a you know I I don't want to be concerned about it but at the same time I want to be a good steward of its kind of a thing right I don't want it to but there's there's a concern perhaps coming up and I just want to we'll we'll find out towards the end of this month what all it is and I'm not going to say much more than that because I don't want to belabor it right but I got the kids together and Kathy well I have no idea what this means so we're gonna we're gonna see what this means and and go through it and figure out what's there I was uh my sister and I used to have discussions with each other as we were getting older and as a as our parents passed away and our aunts and uncles passed away and all that stuff she says you know our our family doctors said at the time you know if you got cancer would you want to know about it and he was like I don't know or how would you deal with it or how would you deal with this particular ailment or I don't know you know we have I think we have ailments that we don't know about that we go through life about and or life with and so I pray for us all with regard to that because none of us are none of us puppies are getting any younger and what's funny is to me is how I when something like this comes up I start to notice things about me because I've never paid any attention to me before at all so it's like geez is that unusual for me or what poor Kathy is like no it's not unusual for you huh did I always do that okay then that must be all right then she goes maybe not so so I chose that I chose that first hymn because it's true God will take care of you if I had I don't know volcanic activity in my brain God would take care of it you know there is no sense worrying about tomorrow because scripture tells us and it's true tomorrow have its own evil we got to deal with the evil that is in there today and we start we who are of the way right we who have Christ and the Spirit in us have a head start on because we can hand it over to the one who asked us to hand it over to him just give me your stuff give me the you who are worried and heavy laden and give me your stuff and I'll take it from here okay <laughs> there's also the bit of scripture my yoke take upon you well what is that yoke what is that what was his labor what was Christ's labor that we were supposed to take on us well I can think of a couple things right off the bat one was the labor of forgiveness one was the labor of grace and Nadine <laughs> and David and uh, I don't know life is interesting life has always been interesting to me I even have a question about this part of Acts that we went through last week um, we're going to be in Acts 21 <coughs> and 22 to some degree we ended in 22 no 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 we didn't we end, we didn't end in 21 yet I don't think no we ended at verse 36 of 30 yeah we got chapter close to 21. ending <coughs> excuse me <coughs> 
So the Apostle Paul's getting himself in trouble again. He, he's, been, he's been away, right? He's been at these different places, and they came back, and he was warned not to go to Jerusalem, right, by this friend of Phil's. Um, Phil's buddy took, his, took Paul's belt and wrapped his, his own feet and hands around him, saying, if you, Paul, if you go to Jerusalem, you're going to get um, bound like this, and the people are going to, and the Jews are going to take you away. Where were the Jews going to take him? Well, as it turns out, according to the prophecy that this guy had for Paul, to, to the Gentiles. And I'm sure in Paul's mind it was like, well, that's where I'm supposed to go in the first place, so what? Okay? What I'm fascinated about was this was a prophecy that the, the guy very theatrically in chapter 21, pointed out to Paul. Now, the guys got scared with this bit of prophecy and says, well, maybe you shouldn't go. Paul said, I, no, I, I'm not scared to go. My life is the Lord's. Right? And so, and Paul was stubborn. And despite everything that his, the rest of the disciples and his friends were saying, Paul's going to go. He's really stubborn. So he goes. When he gets there, they meet up with a couple of guys, meet up with the disciples. Paul and the other folks had some money for them or some kind of a, uh, I've got to imagine it was mostly money or funding of some sort for their efforts. They were, Paul and the guys were getting some people saying, here, give this to the folks in Jerusalem and so Paul, that was one of the reasons why Paul wanted to get there. Um, and there were still some, there were still some issues, some churchy issues. They still had people who were, um, in order to follow Christ, you have to be a Jew first, kind of stuff, right? And there was miscommunication, and there was fake news about Paul and what Paul was saying. And I heard you guys are like you're really disrespectful to the law of Moses. And Paul's like, no, no, uh, not at all. In, in fact, to, to prove that they weren't, they were going to go to temple with these guys who had they were going through, through some ritual thing, and they were going to shave their heads, and Paul said, we're going to go with them, and we're going to shave our heads too, so that will prove to the people that these things that they're saying about us aren't true, right? We, you know, and Paul would say, to the Jew, I'm a Jew, to a Greek, I'm a Greek, to, right? I am there to tell them about Christ as Messiah. Um, Verse 25 of chapter 21 is touching the Gentiles which believe we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled and from fornication. Paul took the men and the next day purifying himself with them entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification in, until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. When the seven days were almost ended, the trouble starts. The Jews which were of Asia, oh, and we have another sect now, when they saw Paul in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him. And again, not in a nice fashion. This was not laying hands on him and wishing him well and praying over him or anything. This was grabbing him by the throat kind of stuff. Right? Getting their hands on his clothes, probably ripping his clothes, laying hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place. And further brought Greeks also unto the temple and have polluted this holy place. See, it's a bad idea to bring Greeks into the temple. Where we heard that kind of stuff before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because you know, 
It's the people you bring into church that always screws up the church, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so apparently, yeah. <laughs> according to these people. And according to people you've known your life and have heard before. And have heard on television, etc., etc. <sighs> Paying no attention to what Jesus said about stuff like that, right? It's not what you put in, it's what's there already that's evil. Right? Jesus would didn't Jesus mention something like that? What what fouls up a man? What's in him already? Whitewashed sepulchers. Yeah. Whitewashed sepulchers. Okay. So we have Paul already in trouble, even though he was trying to do a decent thing and a good thing. And he was working for truth, right? He was working for real news. And it's, you got screwed up. You got to wonder, where is God at times like this? None of this is easy. Where is God in all of this? Right there. He's right there. It just doesn't feel like it. <laughs> right. <clears throat> he had polluted this holy place, verse 29. For they had seen before with him in the city Trophimus and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. These were apparently Greeks that these Asian Jews had seen Paul with, right? Uh, guilty by his guilt by association. They had seen before with him in the city Trophimus and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band, or the cops, right? The centurions, the the Roman guard, and drew him out of the town, or I'm sorry, of the band that all Jerusalem was in uproar. And of course, the Roman soldiers loved to hear that. Oh, not these crazy Jews again. Oh my God, can't we just, I don't know, kill them all, make things easy for us? No, it wasn't easy for the Romans either. who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. In other words, cheese it, the cops are coming, stop it. Somebody apparently knew they were in the wrong, right? Uh, we'll see how it goes. Then the chief captain came near and took Paul and commanded Paul to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. <coughs> Reasonable, right? Some cried one thing, some another, among the multitude, and when this <laughs> chief captain could not know the certainty for the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle, or some kind of a cell, or put him in a different place, get him out of the crowd, right? Maybe if we take this guy that they're beating on, we ask him, maybe we'll figure out what's going on. But let's get him out of here for now. <clears throat> when he came upon the stairs, so it was, that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. So Paul had to be carried upward, right? Like on their shoulders. Warren is off the ground and up, right? Because people are still trying to get at Paul. Why did these Asian guys hate Paul so much? Well, there's a clue here. When he had come upon the stairs, so it was, he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after crying, Away with him! And as Paul was to be led into the castle, or fort, or... Barracks. Barracks. <clears throat> he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto you? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? 
Art thou, art not thou that Egyptian which before these days made an uproar and led out unto the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? So apparently there is a real problem. <laughs> okay? Aren't you the guy that did that? And Paul's like, uh, no. <laughs> Paul said, I'm a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, the city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given me a license, said, go ahead, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spoke unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, Men, brethren, and fathers, hear you my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spoke in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence. Ooh, this guy is speaking Hebrew. Hmm. And he said, I am truly a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as you all are this day. And I persecuted this way unto the death. This, the way, these Christians as they would get called in Ephesus. But they weren't yet called that. Was zealous towards God, as you all are this day. And I persecuted these Christians unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. As also the high priest doth bear me witness and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem to be punished. So Paul's basically giving him his story. I was a bad guy. I was a zealot for God in the same fashion that you are to the point that I wanted to arrest some of these people and bring them to get, to get punished. Right? Verse 6, And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell onto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light, and were afraid. But they heard not the voice of him that spoke to me. And I said, What shall I do? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, and go unto Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of the light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one... Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. In the same hour I looked up upon him, and he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou should know his will, and see that just one, and should hear the voice of his mouth. For you shall be his witness unto all men of what you have seen and heard. Now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive your thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I am imprisoned and beaten every synagogue, them that believe, believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by 
and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him and he said unto me depart for i will send the far hence unto the gentiles and they gave him audience unto his word and then lifted up their voices and then said away with such a fellow from the earth for it is not fit that he should live so much for yelling at the gang <laughs> why did paul waste his time I like this kid. <laughs> Always have. Why? Paul's not an idiot. He asked the chief cop, right? Can I, I need to talk to the people in the country. Oh, well, all right. And I, I got to wonder about the chief, right? Geez, Paul, I don't think that's a real smart idea. <laughs> they just tried to kill you. We had to lift you up out of the crowd's reach. Yeah, but I need to speak to them. And what did Paul tell them? Story. What did he Story tell them? Of his life. That Jesus visited them on the road and, and that, uh, I was like you. Yeah. This is what happened to me. Why are you trying to kill me? I was told by God to do this. Have you people? Were these Asian Jews that much different from the other Jews in Jerusalem? Apparently to some degree, but don't they remember the stories? Don't they remember what they were told? In temple? In all of their worship? In all of their sacrifices and stuff like that? Immediately. They're angry at this guy, and all of that stuff goes out the window. Why? Because Paul apparently brought in a couple of Greeks and befouled the church. That's a good enough reason for them to act the way they did, right? Right? There was no. No! <laughs> That's no. correct, too. I like this kid, too. Yeah. The answer is no! We shouldn't bring this person into the church. They will befoul the church. And God goes, <clears throat> wrong. Talk about befouling my body. Saul, who held the clothes of Stephen and those who were stoning him to death, because why? Why did they stone Stephen to death? Why was Saul there holding the clothes of those who were stoning him and Stephen's clothes too, I think? Because he believed that killing this Stephen was the correct thing to do. Because he was zealous for God. He was on fire for God. A phrase I have hated ever since I first heard it. On fire for Jesus. And I'm going, wait a minute, isn't that the reason that you don't want to be on fire for anyone? Isn't the idea not to go to a place that's like got a lot of fire in it? <laughs> right? Man, when they would say that at practical college, I would go, oh, you stop that stupid saying. I'm on fire for the Lord. Don't be. He doesn't want that. He wants you to do what? According to the book of Acts and all the Gospels, what does he want you to do? Love thy neighbor as thyself, and you know, blah, 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 because I, 
you know, and I don't like to do that. Forgive and, you know, I'd rather be on fire for the Lord. Well, you're being a jerk. He wants you to trust what he has said to the point that you actually do it. There. All these people that are after Paul right now, Paul's going, oh man, they're just like I was. That's kind of probably why he wanted to talk to them. And like Sister Amy said, none of this is easy, but we seek the one to hear the news of Christ Jesus and what Christ Jesus sacrificed bought for them. And we who have been through a lot, we need to look like somebody who believes in Christ Jesus and has faith in what he said and what he taught. This is what Paul's doing, whether it makes any sense or not, right? He's hoping somebody in the crowd, I bet he's hoping somebody in the crowd's going to hear him and it was worth it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Away with him. Get him off the face of the earth. Hey, Esther. Yes. A technical need for a moment. Please. No. No, we're fine. We're fine. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Pay no attention. Pay no, no attention to the, man, the woman behind the curtain. That's right. <laughs> Here, here's something that's interesting. Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. Verse 23, chapter 22. As they cried out and, asked, they, and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the fortress, or barracks, and bade that he should be examined by scourging. So things are going well for our brother Paul. <laughs> <laughs> this is a political you know, Antifa is in there somewhere, I'm sure. Right? Um, boy, can you imagine if you had all the cameras and the microphones that in this, right? Nothing has changed, folks. Honest to God, nothing has changed. Tech has changed, but things are the same. Here, today, Back then, today, same kind of nonsense. It's almost as if almost nobody paid any attention to the words of Jesus and took them to heart. It's almost as if. I'm not saying totally, because we know people who are faithful to the Lord. We, we work to be ourselves. But we know a bunch of other people who have no business doing much of anything other than, I don't know, <laughs> sitting in their high chair and being fed. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the chief captain commanded Paul to be brought into the barracks and bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him, which, you know, of course, scourging him is going to give them that information, right? Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
As they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, and this is beautiful, this is really funny. Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? Whoops. <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> Under Roman law. Yo, yeah. oh, okay, okay, okay. When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Take heed what you do, for this man is a Roman. <laughs> wait a minute, I just, he, he asked me if I spoke Greek, then he spoke Hebrew to these idiots in the street. What do you mean he's a Roman? Well, he is. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Bam! Oh. Verse 27, And the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, are you a Roman? And he said, Yeah. <laughs> or yay. But yes. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was freeborn. See, you could be a Roman citizen if you bought the citizenship. Right? There was many ways to become a Roman citizen, but military. Yeah, service could get you to get you to be a Roman. Well, what's the deal with being a Roman citizen? Where are they? Top of the food chain. No, where are Paul and these guys? In Rome. They're in Rome. What well, happens to be Jerusalem, but it's part of Rome. They're in the Roman Empire. They're in the Roman Empire. And the cops are going to beat uncondemned a Roman citizen. They're going to scourge him. They're going to whip him like they did Christ. Which brings the death penalty to them. Yes. Yes. This is why this is so funny. And so bad. And the politics of it, the makeup of all of the different anxieties in this issue, to me, it's like a Marx Brothers movie. Hmm. Right? Are you really going to whip a Roman citizen? <laughs> you, can, you can see Jackie Gleason, right? <laughs> Put him as the role of the chief centurion. <laughs> it gets all sweaty and he starts getting. Jackie Gleason would be perfect for the role. <laughs> oh, tell me, art, art thou a Roman? He said, yeah. And the chief captain answered, I paid a lot of money to be a Roman. And, and Paul said, yeah, but I was born, of, of, I'm freeborn a Roman. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And then straight away, they departed from him which should have examined. And the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman. And because he had he had bound him. <laughs> oh no. Verse 30. On the morrow, because he would have known the certainty, wherefore he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priests and all the council who appear and brought Paul down and set them, set him before them. What was the issue? The issue was that this guy thought Paul had something to do with something that happened earlier in Jerusalem that was not good. Apparently that wasn't the case, but this guy still had to try to figure out what the hell was going on. Why are they after this yutz? Paul, earnestly, chapter 23, verse 1, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before Lord until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, 
God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. For sittest thou to judge me after the law and the command, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? There's two types of law now that Paul's going, you can't do that to me. By Jewish law and Roman law. What was the Jewish law that this high priest just stupidly broke? No trial. No, no trial. Witness. You don't smack people in the face. High priest. Apparently this one does. What's wrong with these people? I gotta wonder, who's in who of the disciples is in Jerusalem at this point, supposedly to do the work of Christ? in spreading the gospel of Christ. What's happening here in Jerusalem? Politics as usual. That's all that's happening. Misinformation, fake news. We heard three different fake accounts about Paul already from this idiot crowd. Allegedly, Religious people calling for the death of a man. Why? Because he brought two Greeks into church. Nothing has changed. You know, Paul was warned that something like this was going to happen. He was theatrically shown it by that prophet that was with Philip when they were still outside of Jerusalem, don't go. And Paul said, I'll go to the death for Christ and God. I'm supposed to go to the Gentiles anyway. And I've got this bunch of money for the guys in Jerusalem and I gotta give it to them. Well, maybe you shouldn't go right now. I'm going to go now. None of this is easy. And there are times when God will, you know, and somebody, I was debating this point with somebody about that. Do you think Paul, they asked, do you think Paul was being told by God not to go? And I brought up Moses. God knew Saul of Tarsus, did he not? Yeah. God knew the man. Mm -hmm. God knew Paul. God knew what made him. He knew Paul was a zealot. <laughs> he knew Paul was stubborn as, a, as eight mules together. He was a lawyer. He was a lot more than that. He was, Paul was really brilliant. He was educated. Very, very smart, but still stubborn. And even though this guy took Paul's belt off of him and tied his own, tied his feet and hands said, this is what's going to happen to you if you go to Paul, Jerusalem, Paul. Paul said, okay, okay, bring it on. And that's the guy that God knew. God wasn't warning him not to go. He was telling him, <laughs> You better get your ducks in order because this is going to happen. And this is why I believe Paul thought to not be afraid and to go, are you really going to whip a Roman citizen? He was logical. Mm -hmm. Every step of what Paul did, from going to the temple with those Jews, getting his head shaved to fit in with these guys so they'd be more comfortable hearing something about Christ as Savior, as Messiah. Paul went and did that. That he got in trouble for it. He had an idea that was coming up. But God Almighty, did he ever get in trouble for it? Are you really going to whip a Roman citizen? Uh, Jackie Gleason goes crazy. Ananias slaps him in the, oh, high priest, Wonderful, oh, high priest that you are. Why do you unlawfully slap me? 
And what did he call them? Whited wall. And what did he say? You slap me, guess what? You're going to get slapped. <laughs> get slapped ready. <clears throat> God shall smite thee. The whited wall. For sinnest thou to judge me after the law and commandment, commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? You're trying me for what? Bringing two griefs into the temple and disobeying the law and you smack me? See, it's better that Paul was there and not me. I know how I would have reacted. It wouldn't have been good. I know how I would have reacted unless I had the spirit in me going, no, David. And I am listening to the spirit then. And as I ask people to pray for me, pray that I say what I need to say, and pray that I shut up when I need to shut up. Pray that I do what the Lord wants me to do and nothing else. Pray that I stop doing what I want, and pray that I do what the Lord wants. I'm going to Jerusalem anyway. You shouldn't. It's against the rules. I don't care about your rules. You shouldn't go to bars. I have brothers and sisters in there that need him. I'm going. And that's not because I want to. I don't even like some of them. He wants them. And that's why I'm going. Tim, at the post office. Tim. You know, you can, all, you can do all this at home. You can get, get all this stuff printed. Why do you come in? I, just, I like coming in here and talking to you. <laughs> he likes to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> there has been a couple of things that have happened at the post office that's all him. That one guy that walked out of his car when his wife came in. I was like, suddenly I, I was told to look out the window. And here's this man coming out of the truck and kind of like walking down the street. Not right. And I dropped my stuff, went out of the post office and said, hi. And I took the guy's arm and I said, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. And he goes, oh, hi, how you doing? He didn't know me from Adam. Mm -hmm. But his wife had this look on her face like, I gotta hurry. She couldn't hurry. There was two people ahead of her. And I just, I gotta go outside. So when I took the man back to the truck, his wife comes out and she goes, oh, thank God. And she came up and gave me a great big hug. And I can't, I thought I had the door locked because he obviously unlocked it. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Come on, you wanna get in the, get in the truck? I'll help you in. Oh, okay. Thank you. He was he had dementia. Mm -hmm. He would have wandered off. She wouldn't have found him. No. <laughs> he would have gotten hit by a car or something. Sometimes. Yeah. But the point was, drop your stuff, David. I know how important it is that you get it shipped. No. I was there. I like going there. But the point is he wants me to go and get with people. From time to time. Or leave here. Okay, I'm not here. <laughs> That's happened too. Do what he says. God will take care of you. Nothing has changed. People, masses are always going to be unreasonable and illogical and stupid. And they're going to be bringing up religious reasons all over the place why you should not do what he wants you to do. Because man loves what they believe they know. Ananias, smack him. Oh, really? Contrary to the law, Mr. High Priest? Verse 4. He's going to pay for this too. 
And they stood by and said, Revilest thou God's high priest? To be continued. But you know what? A personal side is damn straight I'm going to. He shouldn't have the job in the first place. People have jobs they should not have. That's just going to be the way it is. It was true here then. It's true here now. Bill, I love you. I would never vote for you for president. And I'm certain vice versa. And that's okay. There's some people who shouldn't have the bloody job, okay? No, I don't want vice president. I want to be the... I didn't say vice. I want to be the guy behind the president paying him off. That way he gets shot and You I'm have to stand alive. in line for that. There's no one guy ever <laughs> anywhere. This is that's this is the point. There's no one guy in charge of this. Where's God? God sets up stuff and he lets it run. Why doesn't God just come down and all, all these people and just handle it? He is. He is. He is lost. You gotta trust the way he's handling it, no matter how crazy it gets. You gotta trust him. He's the one that knows how it all works. I have no idea why these people are this crazy. Why are they this crazy to begin with? Don't know. I have some ideas. They don't solve anything it's still happening. You've had a lot of doctors look into this kind of behavior. They've got names for it. It doesn't solve a bloody thing. You see it in the streets all the time. What's the answer? On the front of the church. <laughs> Christ is the answer. The Spirit changing your heart, changing your mind, changing your guts is the answer. Not thinking so much of people in quote unquote high position. <laughs> Whatever. I know the one who is the highest and the fullest and the most of all. There's nothing higher than that. And I'm going to be scared of something lower than him? I don't believe so. Is Paul scared? I'm sure he is. Is it changing what he said he was going to do? No. 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 What did he say he was going to do? I'm going to be for God if it kills me. To be continued. For sure. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for this bit of scripture, which reads like a... <laughs> which reads like a compilation of uh, newspaper articles from the last two months. Guide us, O Spirit. Keep us a thankful and positive people. Help us strive to understand the people we don't like. Help us strive to understand the people we don't understand. Help us walk, be willing to walk in their moccasins a little bit and try to come up with a peaceful solution, logical solution to some, some of this. Help us know when it's time to brush the dust off of our shoes and go somewhere else. Strengthen our resolve to say what you want us to say so that that one person out there can hear what you want them to hear. It's worth it all. I thank you that it is worth it all. I thank you that out of tumult, sometimes you reward us with the fact that we have brought your message to someone who needed hope and salvation and got it and is now a brother or sister in 
your body. Talk about bringing the right people in the church, no matter how dirty or how filthy or how whatever. Help us not be like these people here in this section of the book of Acts and help us be more like Paul. Yeah, and scared, but trusting. Ready to be strengthened by you. And as Paul writes later on, his weakness is your strength. We have to remember that. We pretend like we need to be strong all the time, and that's nonsense. Because we can't be. And you said that to us, too. Thank you for your son Christ and what he's done for us. Thank you for the, comfort, the comforter and the teacher that he left for us, the Holy Spirit. Thank you that we're not by ourselves alone in this. And thank you for the realization that all of this crap has gone on before. Amen. There are plates in the back. Should you wish to make an offering uh, to the financial running of the church, please do so. Um, you don't have to. <laughs> there is no tithe. You can go ahead and offer to God what you feel you want to. I know something about that. I get comfortable with that. Number 351, I have decided to follow Jesus. <clears throat>
follow Jesus and to do what he has planned for us. To stand up for Jesus. In Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Ah, good to see all of you. Have a wonderful week. Some of us are going to be deep Christmasing and getting stuff ready for Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first